that roar when you ran out just puts goosebumps on the back of your neck. Moss went straight through, Andrew's there! He's just forever looking for an opportunity. Exhilarating football! That's a good sign of a good team. Accelerates and punches through them! And he's only going to get better. And the hammer stands them up! And Queensland going to do it again! Well, it's one of our favourite times of the year. All the NRL action comes here to Queensland, boys. Magic Round weekend taking place on the Hello Turf there at Suncorp Stadium in a few days' time. We've had several additions now, Lockie. How good is it? It's turned out probably better than we thought it would be. Yeah, I think uh, when it first arrived, um, I think a lot of people thought, oh, you know, it'd be an interesting concept. Um, I know we... It's, been, it's done in the Super League over in the UK, but I don't think anyone would have envisaged how popular it has been. And, you know, it's, it's, it's like a... It's an event where it, it, it's rugby league orientated, but I think it's just about Brisbane itself, just getting a, a, a bit of an, a vibe or, a, or an intensity about it where it goes into party mode. Yeah, definitely party mode down Caxton Street. How good's it seeing that? Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it uh, it certainly will be. And if you're if you're looking for high value entertainment, head that way. Yeah, you'll uh, you'll get plenty of it. But uh, I think it's uh, an opportunity for the vast majority of the people that um, are in attendance. Uh, they don't get to see Suncorp Stadium too often. Um, for those that uh, travel from interstate or far north Queensland uh, to come down, they get the chance to to see what they've seen on television. Um, and that's uh, during the representative games in particular um, where they get the chance to, to see uh, Lang, the old Lang Park, now Suncorp, light up uh, and it becomes part of, uh, of, of high value entertainment. And uh, for those that are going along to all the games, if you if you don't get pleased in this game, in this setup, uh, you're, you're pretty hard to entertain. There's, there's no doubt about, about that. Um, there'll be some wonderful games on show and uh, some very determination, uh, a lot of determination, sorry, uh, for the players to, uh, to book the points while they entertain themselves. I was talking to a bloke in the crowd at the Dolphins game last Thursday night, Suncorp Stadium. He said him and his few mates are having a Bucks party for Magic Ground. Can you imagine how wild yeah, that'll get? Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a bit of a marathon for a Bucks party. <laughs> yeah. um, I reckon they might be watching Hangover as a yeah. bit of, a, bit of um, <laughs> inspiration. Yeah. Um, but, look, I, I, there's, there's a lot of the times you go and speak to people that are, that are at the games in the corporate boxes and a lot of them be punters, yeah. um, you know, groups that have just... This is their annual event where they go away. So, um, there's... Yeah, again, it's rugby league focus, but I think there's a lot of people around the country that just see it as a wonderful opportunity to go and socialise with their mates and have a mm. trip away. Mm. And Adam, I think it's also a, a chance for, for footy fans that don't normally take a, a lot of notice or attention of, uh, of players from different clubs yeah. um, because they're supporting the Broncos uh, 99 times out of 100. Mm. Um, they're uh, they're backing the Broncos, watching the Broncos so they don't get to see them. Now, um, for those that aren't playing against the Broncos, um, they'll find themselves uh, under the vision of, uh, you know, uh, footy fans that, uh, that, that want to see um, the, uh, the entertainment factor and uh, they'll have the chance to, to be able to go out there and see um, players that they've heard so much about but have had so little time to, uh, uh, to view them. So it's, uh, it really is a, a fantastic opportunity for rugby league to be promoted in the best possible way. Yeah, you know, the costumes as well, and it's like a test match, right? Yeah. It's like our version of a test match where it's three days, well, it's four days, include Origin. Yeah. yeah. And basically the same guys and women turn up the same every day and they're in the different costumes and some look a bit a bit fresher on day one than they do <laughs> after day four but it's like our version of a test match it's awesome yeah and almost there's that old school feel of like when you'd go to the footy even though these are all nrl games consecutive like when you used to go to the footy as a kid you'd have like the president's cup or the reserve yeah. grade and then the first grade yeah. so like it's always good going to footy watching more than one game you yeah. kind of get that better value for money yeah. but as Lockie mentioned the women's state of origin series kicks off thursday night so it's the precursor to magic round first time they'll play a three-game series and it starts at suncorp stadium well how how good is that for the women's game 
Magnificent. Fantastic. It'll be the best possible uh, entertainment uh, uh, for women's fans. Um, and I think the, uh, the girls that, uh, that go out there will have uh, um, one thing in mind, and that is playing to the best of their uh, ability. It's going to be sensational. I mean, we've been highly entertained by watching the guys over the last few decades. Now we get to see the girls. We've uh, been pleased with what we've seen uh, from their performances at club level. Now um, the, it's the time for the, for the big stuff. Um, the, uh, the state of origin and anybody that will suggest that, uh, uh, that the girls don't have the same hate for the uh, opposition yeah. state um, will only need to go out there and see the uh, wonderful effort that the girls are about to put in. It's definitely, it's definitely the standard you can see has risen like in the past few years now that they've got the opportunities. Yeah, I think putting the, the investment and resources behind and you can see how quickly they've evolved and got you know more and more professional with their performance, their, their athletic ability. I, like I, I've covered a few of these games. I can't remember when they've played... I don't think they played too many at Suncorp. They've I played, don't think mm. they've ever played so, at Origin at Suncorp, yeah. So mm. if you're a... If you're a um, you know, a young girl growing up and you've been watching, you know, State of Origin and you just know how how, in, how much, you know, what Lane Park or Suncorp Stadium means to, to mm. Origin. Like, this would be, I think, really special for some of those players to wear the maroon jersey and for, for the Blues as well to, to be playing at Suncorp in what we know is, you know, the heart of State of Origin. Mm. It's a good point Lockie makes. It's almost their version of the Artie Beetson moment that Wall was a part of, like, the first time at Suncorp Stadium. They'll, they'll always remember this. Yeah, oh, it certainly is. The, um, and, and, Adam, you, you never forget the first time that you go onto the field uh, in first grade. It's something. But you take up another step higher. Um, your first Origin game that you, that you play, and particularly um, when it's at Suncorp, mine was what we call the old Lang Park. Yeah. Um, and to see the uh, the support that uh, that we had from uh, from the uh, very loyal Queensland supporters, it was uh, it was fantastic. And quite honestly, um, you may have had more enjoyable uh, games at uh, at different stages of your career. But the first time that you go onto that place uh, when you're playing State of Origin, uh, you feel ten foot tall and bulletproof. It's the it's the biggest moment of your life, and it's something that um, you know when people bring it up was these was this moment better than that moment? You, you can sort of say, well, that's an individual thing, but collectively the whole thing um, of uh, of getting to the ground, getting dressed, watching the legendary players that you're playing alongside, such as the Arthur Beatsons and and Rod Reddys, Rod Morrises, um, that uh, you were about to step on the on the field with that's uh, that's a moment of your life that uh, that can never be bettered yeah I think just to clarify I think there would have been a women's interstate game between Queens, Queensland and New South Wales possibly played at that ground but yeah. I don't mm. think no, there's been an origin I could be wrong banner, but yeah. I feel like this might be their first occasion yeah. yeah you would have played a few origins before you played at Suncorp you would have played the old ANZ at the start of your origin career Lockie can uh, you remember your first origin at Suncorp yeah our first origin was 97 which was Super League yeah. so um, it was a little bit little bit different but yeah we didn't um, you know, in 98 we played an Origin there and then 99 we played and then obviously it got torn down in 2001. Yeah. So my first represent, my, the first time I represented Queensland at that level was, um, you yeah, for Queensland in the Super League. So, yeah, it wasn't a Suncorp. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Plenty of Origin memories between these two. We could talk all day about that. Uh, let's move the focus back to the NRL. The Titans have got their mojo back together. Unlucky probably not to have three wins in a row. They beat the Warriors, they've beaten the Cowboys and narrowly lost to the Storm. Uh, well, what's what's Des Hasler done to turn it around? Yeah, he inspires players, doesn't he? He uh, um, gives them a, a plan which he, he asks them to... Uh, uh, to achieve and uh, certainly they have um, risen to a, a level that I'm sure Des believes that there's still uh, a considerable uh, improvement to uh, to take place but uh, they aren't finished yet. There's no way in the world they're anywhere near finished yet. Um, they didn't start off 100% and, and Des will probably be the first one to say we haven't peaked yet um, but uh, we've still got a little bit of work to do but um, it's been good to uh, to watch them uh, take place and I still think that uh, that they are a, a team that uh, will have enormous uh, respect from, uh, from their opposing sides that they take on every week by the end of the season uh, um, the respect that um, that the teams will have will be will be sky high um, they've got a lot to do and you know Desi's the first one to admit that uh, um, he probably thinks that he's got a little bit of improvement to do as well not just the players so um, it's it's going to be quite interesting to see how far they go resilience for yeah. mine I think um, 
When they broke through and beat the Warriors, you know, the back end of that game, they were under the pump for about 20, 25 minutes. Defensively, they just hung in there, hung in there. And that was the backbone of that win, which gave them the confidence. So for mine, it's just the resilience they're showing defensively. Yeah, they seem to have their confidence well and truly back. But two of their best players in that win over the Cowboys were Kieran Four and defensively, he was superb. He saved a few tries and AJ Brimson while, but with them injured at the moment, how much more difficult does that become? Yeah, that's a, that's definitely a challenge. But I'm sure Des, um, he'll be dangling a carrot. Um, he'll be uh, inspiring his players to uh, to simply fill in, uh, basically saying to them that uh, that they're in there for a particular job and that's to uh, to fulfil the roles as similarly as they possibly can without uh, throwing away their own style of footy. So it's uh, it's going to be interesting. But uh, Brimson, um, you know, filling in uh, of those guys, I've, I've got to say, um, I, I think uh, will be a challenge. But one, um, when you're in that, uh, that sort of position, you love challenges like that, to be able to go and, and prove that you are as good as the players that you're repl- you are replacing. Yeah, well, the other one is uh, missing Tanner Boyd as well. Yeah, he's the so yeah. yeah. The depth in the halves is getting really pushed now. Um, yeah, Brimson's been outstanding. How far away is Campbell? Uh, he trained today. I'm okay. not sure. He'll, he'll be close maybe he'll be a week close, or two. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, if, if Campbell's back, he, you know, you, maybe you put him in the halves because, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, look, they're, they're big losses, particularly for, and I've, I've been really impressed with his leadership yeah. over the last, you know, four or five weeks because, you know, the pressure was building, but he handled it well. And, and I think, you know, he is obviously pretty close to Desi Hasler. And I think he was, you know, he was starting to feel that, that you know, his, his coach, his old coach from Manly was starting to get a bit of criticism. And, yeah. you know, he, he yeah. definitely has been a big part of, in them turning it around. I, I, I've got to say, I think seven suits him mm-hmm. there at the moment. It just takes control of the game. And I think that's been a big difference for the Titans. So what do you do with Brimson when he does come back well? So he's played at centre, he's played at fullback, he's played at 5'8 this year. You, you pick one position for him right now. Where do you play Brimson? Uh, <laughs> that's the hardest question to, yeah. to answer. Yeah, the spot. Oh. We've been talking about this for yeah. two years. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 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 And we still can't answer it, or I still can't answer it. Um, I, I think maybe at one. Yeah. Um, I think the, uh, the key playmaker roles at six and seven um, tend to uh, increase the, a bit of pressure. Uh, on his shoulders, so so maybe maybe there. I, I think he loves sort of adventuring, um, and he picks his uh, uh, his uh, position where he he wants to dart in and, and add himself to the attacking line pretty well. I, I have a lot of respect for him in that department, and I think he times his charges into the line extremely well. Yeah, I, I reckon on current form, and I know they're injured, but I'd I'd leave Kieran at seven. Um, let him run the team, use his kicking game, mm. and then I just allow Brimson to play at six and just play what's in front of him. He's going to see more footy at, with six, but he's going to about the same as what he would have won. But in the centres, he gets wasted, as we've worked out. Yeah. So put him at six and just tell him to play what's in front of you, AJ, and then if Campbell's fit, I'd, I'd put him at one. But at the moment, they've got you know too many injuries to, to sort of you know worry about um, what their final spine is at the moment. Do you think it could be a horses for courses, Lockie? I mean, he may fit in at that position against certain teams at, to be best judged by the... Or do you think that's a, a, a permanent position where he can increase his, uh, his performances week in, week out? Well, we've been talking about five players going into four for yeah. the spine, yeah. and I, I just think what we've learned out of AJ playing in the centres, he needs to be closer to the action. Mm. So... If it's not one, because I think Jaden's best position is one, yeah. then maybe you try him at six and just say, look, you know, get your hands on the ball, but don't worry about running the team. That's Kieran's job. You just get the ball and you play what's in front of you. Mm. I think one thing we can agree on, centre, never again. Don't send him back to the centres. Like he's, he's, he's wasted. He touches the ball three or four times a game there. Yeah. You've got to get a ball in your hand. Now that they're on the improved Titans, I still think they're second last on the ladder, depending on for and against. What's, what's the achievable goal? So we're heading towards the halfway mark of the season. Well, what, what do you look at? If they finish in, say, X position, they've done well. Oh, gee, that's, a, that's a tough one to, to answer. Um, I, I think that they're, uh, they're going to uh, take on uh, challenges which are, uh, which are weekly and try and uh, fill exactly what's required from the coach, who can be very tough to, to please um, each week. Look... Oh, where are they? Where am I? Where will they be pleased? I, I, I think if uh, if they could get to, probably eighth. Yeah. 
that'd be a position they'd, they'd be extremely happy with. But it's almost an insult saying that that they could finish that low down the ladder. Um, you know, there is still a, an opportunity for them to, to do far better than that. Well, the key will be how they get through this origin period. You yeah. Know, they've got some injuries, right? But if they can jag a few wins, like they're only, they're five points out of the eight. Um, and there's a big congestion, but just below yeah. the eight. So, you know, if they could jag a couple of wins against the odds through this origin period, like, there's no, yeah, I, I reckon from where they are now, obviously if they get to the to the eight, then that's a, that's a, a big achievement, but I also think there's a for, for Des. It's it's you know I think it's about they've they've turned the ship and it's about playing, you know, improving their game and they're slowly doing that. So by the back end of the year, if they're they're still improving their game and playing to a, a, the capability of building, beating some of these better sides like the sides in the top four, then I think that's a pass mark for them. Yeah. You know, at the moment it's just how they finish the season as opposed to where they finish on the ladder. Yeah. yeah, and the team they defeated on the weekend, the poor old Cowboys, zero wins now from their past five games. Well, it's fair to say they're the most disappointing Queensland team at the moment. Without doubt. Yeah. Yeah, they've been uh, pretty poor. Adam and I know you and I have spoken about it on a couple of occasions, but um, I don't think they're playing anywhere within... not not even remotely close to the same standard that they were producing last year. And I think they were, they were performing pretty well. I regard them as being uh, the real disappointments of, of the season so far. Admittedly, they've uh, got a couple of players that uh, have been struggling uh, to produce their best form and they've had some trouble with injuries as well, but so is every club in the competition. Um, I guess if there is one, one bonus, uh, it gives them a, a wonderful carrot that uh, will be dangled in front of them for the rest of the season. I'm sure the coach... Uh, um, uh, will uh, give them a bit of a spray, but uh, that's an, another thing that sort of uh, sort of amazes me. You sit there and you watch him every week, uh, and he doesn't seem to be any more upset than he was when they were producing the wonderful style of football. Um, so uh, you know, I guess blowing up in the uh, in the coach's box is never going to achieve anything. Uh, but there certainly is some disappointment uh, when it comes to assessing the uh, the Cowboys play and what the areas of uh, of difficulty are that they uh, seem to be having with almost monotonous regularity. Well, after the first month, I thought they'd be top four. Yeah. Yep. And they have completely... Gone they've backwards. gone... Yeah. Well, they lost a few games. And what happens when you've lost a few games and you start to lose your confidence? And that's what they look... They look like a team without any confidence in that game. They started to... When the game was over, they started to find, you know, some momentum. And yeah. So maybe that'll spark them. They got... Look, they got South this weekend. Like, you have to think... That's a must-win for them. They, if they, if they, you know, they got to, they got to break this cycle of losses to get the confidence back. I know if they get their confidence back, they're a much better team than what they're showing. Would Todd Payton be starting to feel the pressure himself, Lockie? Uh, yeah, I, yeah. Look, you know, I, like I said, after a month, I think a lot of people thought they were top four material. Mm. So why, why has it changed so much? Um, in such a short space of time. So I think it could easily be turned around with a win and get some confidence back, but geez, it needs to happen soon. And there's no better opportunity than this weekend, in my opinion. Um, look, Souths aren't going that well, but they've got some good players, but it's a winnable game. Yeah, that's, uh, that's right, Lockie. And again, if they uh, produce a, a performance the way that they were early in the season, people are going to pat them on the back and say, oh, well, they've uh, uh, returned to that form that they were displaying early. Have a look where we're sitting on the ladder. OK, it'll be from the games that we play now on. And if they do seem to have a bit of confidence about their displays, uh, I think, um, you know, it'll be, um, remember, earlier when we weren't in too much uh, uh, good, good form at all, um, that'll be swept under the, uh, under the carpet. So... It'll, uh, it'll all have to do with their, uh, their performances. If they can put a couple of wins together, I think the confidence will return very well. And yeah, they're conceding some really soft tries at the moment, so hopefully they can turn that around. They tend to play a bit better at Suncorp Stadium, so as Lockie mentioned, Saturday night, that's the last game on the Saturday against the Rabbitohs, Suncorp Stadium. You'll also see that game live and free on Channel 9, so you get an extra game uh, this week on the Channel 9 coverage. So you'll see footy Friday night, Saturday night and Sunday on Channel 9. The Friday night game, the Broncos against Manly. Um, Ezra Mamlocky has really had to take charge in the absence of Anna Reynolds. You like what you saw in that win over the Eels? Yeah, well, that was one of the opportunities after Adam Reynolds was watching some of these uh, players, you know, like Ezra, sort of grow and, and sort of evolve 
more as a player uh, and take more ownership of the, the team's performance. So, no, it was, it was good. And I think, you know, when Ezra first came into grade, there was always, you know, concern about his defence, but he, he's totally... Like, he, he gets out there, he gets very physical. Like, his defence has been great. So yeah. you can't underestimate what he's, what he's capable of, Ezra. And, you know, the other part to it... He throws in that X factor where he can, whether it's an intercept or where he can just score a long, long range try out of nothing. And, you know, he's going to learn how to manage a team in this period where with no Adam Reynolds. So it's just all part of his, um, you know, his um, evolution. Yeah. Yeah, Ezra's confidence certainly has a snowball effect. Um, while he was uh, putting the good games together, it was getting better and better and better. Um, there was a, a couple of difficult games that um, um, he, he struggled just a little bit uh, and everyone wanted to point the finger and say, you know, he's not doing too well at all. Well, um, let's assess him on his, uh, on his full-time performance. But I think that uh, uh, certainly um, when he has uh, uh, Reynolds um, put to the side, uh, that's probably increased his... Uh, um, uh, the probability that we're going to see his better games. Um, he'll have that confidence, he'll have that, uh, uh, that will to win, the determination uh, to, uh, to lead the way for the, for the players around him. And with Reynolds out now, Lockie, how much more important does that origin period become for Brisbane? It's always been a, a tough period to navigate for mm. them. If they, if they can drag a few wins and get into the top four by the end of origin, mm, yeah. they're very well placed. Yeah, I, I think for a coach, you'd be you, what you want to do is get through the origin period and still the team playing well at the end of it and have all of your your rep players fit and healthy. That's probably the objective yep. so that you can have a run at the finals after the origin period. So, look, if you get some wins in that period, then that's a bonus, but I think you just want your team playing good, consistent footy the whole sort of, what is it, nine weeks or six weeks um, and, and just... You know, keep your fingers crossed that your best players are, you know, come out the other side and they're not carrying any mm. sort of major injuries. Yeah. And we'll get a glimpse into the future, it seems, on Friday night. So Billy Walters got a bit of a wrist issue. Looks as though Blake Moser will come off the bench in that backup dummy half role with uh, Tyson Smoothie to start. Uh, well, how good is it seeing the, the youngster get a start? Yeah, it's uh, it's terrific, Adam. I've I've got to say that the uh, the Broncos have managed to do that very successfully over the years, uh, bring in the uh, the new faces, uh, guys that um, you know we don't know too much about, but uh, they go out onto the field and uh, they display um, performances um, that are exceptional, um, and it uh, it seems to. Um, to basically inspire them for the games that will come and also the seasons that will follow. And um, it, uh, it also um, provides an opportunity for whoever the talent merchant was that, uh, that signed the guys like that to ask for a pay increase. He'll be saying, you know, I got the, I've got these guys here, so ka-ching, let that register ring. He's been playing quite well for the South Logan Magpies uh, in the Queensland Cup at the moment, Blake Moser. But, Lockie, where does his future lie, knowing that Billy Walters has recently signed a contract extension, Tyson Smoothies mm. uh, ahead of him? Can you, can you carry that many hookers or it's up to Moser to make a statement? Well, you know, I think Blake, it's, it, you know, it's up to him. I think let his footy do the talking and then, um, you know, he'll have some decisions to make. I think he becomes a, a free agent at November 1. Yeah, yep. Um, you know, it's just, it's up to him if he either says, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push my way into the team or, you know, if, if I feel like I have to wait a couple of years and, you know, am I willing to do that? So, look, all, all he can do right now um, is make the most of his opportunity in first grade. He's, it's been a long time between drinks for when he played his first game to mm, now. Yeah. So, you come in, you've got an opportunity, Blake, and if you play well and, you, you know, you showing you're doing, you've got all the right signs with your attitude, then you give yourself the best chance of staying there. Yep, definitely. And the Dolphins, too, continue to defy expectations, sitting in a fourth spot. Another, well, you can't really call him a youngster. He's a late bloomer. <laughs> Trey Fuller, excitement machine. But with the hammer coming back, it's really hard to fit him in the team. If, if you're another NRL club, are you looking at him? Is he on your radar? Oh, I think the talent scouts uh, from other clubs certainly like to look around, especially if they're having difficulties uh, in that area. But um, I love watching his, uh, his display. He was good. There was no BS about him. Um, he displayed his best. Um, there's uh, certainly uh, no arrogance uh, about his play. But uh, he, uh, he fitted in really well.
he fitted in very, very well. And uh, it, uh, to be able to do that, um, you know, you'll probably describe himself, or his teammates will describe him rather, uh, as a little bit of a seasoned campaigner. Um, but uh, now that he has the opportunity, uh, uh, the world's uh, there for him. It's up to him, uh, you know, how far he wants to go. And that was almost Billy Slater like his yeah. try. Like people make comparisons in Origin. Lucky, you were there on the sideline. How, how good was it to see the crowd get involved for a little fella? Yeah, well, uh, it reminds me that game the other night when Ben Barber was going on a, yeah. a streak yep. of yeah. unbelievable performances. And I do think that Trey kicked that chip kick pretty much where Billy Slater kicked his, you know, all those years ago. So, mm. now that was a good performance. And look, you know, I think, um, you know, he would have. Absolutely love the opportunity to play and, and he's given himself the best opportunity to, to remain in the team. How, how if he can, can stay in the team with Hammer coming back, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But mm. look, Wayne's not afraid to pick a 17th player that he might not use. He's done it many times before and you know, he might th see Trey as a backup for an outside back injury. Um, so he might still get a chance on the bench, but he couldn't have done a better job with the opportunity he had. Oh, definitely. And another player who's killing it at the moment, uh, Cody Nikarima, probably having his best ever season in the NRL. A bit of a journeyman, multiple positions at multiple clubs. Well, where's his improvement come from, do you think, just watching him as a playmaker? Uh, common sense, I think. I, I like watching him play. Um, he uh, positions himself uh, very well and uh, very skillfully. Um, virtually every time uh, he's, uh, he's involved. His attacking game has been fantastic uh, and I think that uh, he certainly targets the opposition and, uh, and makes best use of it. Um, I think that he's, uh, he's done a fair bit of hard work in the build-up to each game to, to try and um, mark down the players that he should be uh, targeting as a, as a very talented attacking player. Um, but he's, uh, he's certainly one of those guys that uh, has enormous amounts of... Uh, uh, experience and uh, he's put that to the to the best credit and I think for him clarity too the Dolphins told me at the start of the season they said you can play six if you grasp that opportunity whereas previously in the past it's like am I playing fullback am I bench am I hooker that would help no doubt that clarity in his mind yeah and look Wayne's you know he what his strategy and it's obviously proven to be very successful it's he's improved the individual as a person and improved the individual as a player so yeah, Wayne would have sat, sat down with Cody and looked at his deficiencies in his game and worked on that and you know, made sure that he got you know, anything in his game, you know, like you know, working on his defence. But just, just having a clear, simple message about what he needs to do in attack, you know, focus on a couple of things and just keep it really simple. And, and you can see he's playing um, with, with, as you said, clarity. Like yep. He just seems to be in control of his game. He's always been a footballer um, and he can do some wonderful things. But I think getting consistent football out of Cody was always a challenge and you know, Wayne's always been the best at being able to get consistency out of his players. Yeah, I've enjoyed watching his, uh, his defensive displays too, Lockie. I, I think he's done that very well and he hasn't come in to try and uh, punish... Uh, the ball carriers um, with a, a very solid tackle. He's just making sure that uh, he's not missing them. And, yeah. and that's probably been the, um, a, a big increase uh, in his game that he's targeted for himself. And I think his performances have been really good. And the coach, uh, Wayne Bennett, we think in the next couple of days or so, he's moved to the Rabbitohs for next season. Will be official, as he keeps telling us, he's unemployed for 2025 <laughs> and needs a job short of a dollar, old Wayne. But um, <laughs> looking at him... Looking at the moment, the Dolphins look a lot closer to a premiership than the Rabbitohs. Lockie, would Wayne in a little bit of a way be kicking himself, thinking he's he's not there to finish the job? Oh, look, I think there's a lot of upside mm. of the Rabbits. Yeah, OK. Uh, mm. um, like, I know Damien Cook's getting on. I know Cody Walker's getting on. Luttrell is still, you know, pretty young. But, you know, those three players alone, <laughs> you get them playing to their real potential, you, yeah. you, 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 you're not... You're starting to... You know, you're starting to beat quite a few teams. Yeah, I agree with you 101%, Lockie. It's, he's, uh, the, those three uh, are the backbone to, uh, to a side and um, it's very unusual that they aren't uh, displaying that uh, every week of the season. Um, they're very talented players that uh, can make life uh, for those in the team around them very comfortable. Mm. And no doubt if the Dolphins do go on to play a grand final next year, Wayne will take credit for it anyway. So he's in a win-win <laughs> situation there. Yeah. Um, finally, let's wrap it up with a little bit of chat on Origin. Only a couple of weeks away till the Queensland selectors name their team. I'm going to throw a couple of potential bolters out uh, for you guys and tell me who you like. 
Uh, Jaden Sua, he's previously played for Queensland. Uh, Hopgood from the Eels. Uh, Kobe Hetherington, Broncos. Corey Jensen, Broncos. Bo Fermel, Titans. Brendan Piakura, Broncos. Josh Kerr from the Dolphins. Or uh, Francis Molo from the Dragons. Who's impressed you out of those guys? Mate, well, you know, sitting next to you in the, in the newsroom over the last couple of years, I, I know that uh, you've heard the name Jaden Sewer yeah. a few times. I'm a huge fan of his. I, I think that he, he can play. Um, so certainly he will uh, remind the, uh, uh, the origin selectors uh, of his worth. I think he's a lot tougher than he ever gets credit for and he's a lot more skillful than he gets credit for. But... Um, there is uh, a lot of talent uh, on show for uh, for those positions, so it'll be interesting. But um, you know, if uh, he did get uh, selected in the side, I think um, it'd, it'd make the uh, the guys around him feel quite comfortable. Yeah, I think they're all in the frame. Yeah, Just keep yeah. playing well, boys. <laughs> yeah. um, because well, New South Wales have got some injuries. So to Queensland. Mm. Yeah. Um, Especially in those middle forwards, no yeah. Tino, no so Tom Gilbert. There's some opportunities yeah. out there for some players on the fringe, and you know, Jaden Jaden's been. Great at the Dragons this year, and I think you know he's had he's been there every week consistently. Whereas you know struggled with injuries, and obviously I think he's been he's enjoyed being cased by Shane Flanagan. So you know you always know he's uh, been capable. Lost his microphone there. <laughs> we've always getting too excited talking yeah. about Origin. Yeah, we've always known he's been capable. Uh, but to get the best out of him each week has always been a challenge and there's been a number of factors there. But he's happy, playing good, but there's a lot of those names you, you put down there that they're going well, good, good people, and, you know, I think they, they wouldn't let you down if they were wearing a Queensland jersey. And uh, <coughs> in origin, how important or valuable is it to have a hitman who can potentially, like, make the opposition nervous that, oh, geez, I don't want to run at this bloke? You guys would have played with quite a few over the years. Yeah, there's a, there's a few of those, and um, it's always good to, to have them in their side. Um, in your side, I'm sorry. Um, they've, uh, they've been there the early days. You know, when Gilly came in, yeah. uh, he used to uh, uh, convince uh, opposition ball carriers to just <laughs> go and look for a, a different way of coming through, and we've had some, uh, some guys in the Maroons uh, over the years uh, who have been very powerful uh, in their defensive department and, uh, and certainly come up with... Um, try saving uh, tackles at, uh, at different times. So I think, uh, you know, we've, we won't lack in that department. Tony Carroll was your guy? Yeah, he was yeah. my bodyguard. Uh, like, like you said, while it, there'd be a lot of sort of back rowers starting to sort of come my way and then I was sort of bracing for contact. <laughs> bracing for contact next minute, bang. Along comes the human cannonball. Tony <laughs> Carroll just wipes him out for me. Yeah, I remember Tre you know, Trevor Gilmeister ran at me one time and I saw him coming and I thought, I do need a little bit of uh, um, an opportunity to advise him not to come my way again. And as he came, I put the elbow out and I hit him straight over the nose and <laughs> his nose went all over the place. And, and I said, oh, mate, uh, Gilly, I'm sorry about that, mate. Oh, sorry, I just uh, got you a bit high. And he said, it's all right, mate. I'll get you back. Watch. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the next couple of times I ran the ball, I could, uh, I could feel the eyes going back in looking for, for him. Was he venturing my way? So uh, defenders like that certainly do make you think twice about uh, carting the ball in their direction. Yeah, but, yeah that's one element of all, but it's also the, the player under fatigue needs to be able to make, we talk about the, you know, the game of inches, yeah. there needs to be able to fill that space. That's what Origin's about. You know, when you're done, you're dusted, you're tired, fatigued, you just got to make that effort. So, you know, having aggression obviously helps, but you still got to be able to make that effort when you're fatigued. And that's, that's what decides Origin's. And you touched on it just before, Lockie, uh, New South Wales, quite a few injuries at the moment. Uh, Nathan Cleary, the latest one. How does Billy Slater try and prevent the Maroons from becoming complacent in the lead up to the season opener or does that just not exist ever in Oregon? No, I don't no. think it exists. No. I think the teams are too close. No. The boys, they've been for a long time now and um, like, you know, there was a there was a time there where Queensland won eight in a row. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but, but, but complacency was never there because it just, no. or, every Origin game means so much to both teams <laughs> that um, yeah, I, I don't think complacency exists. No, no, you're right, Lockie. Even, you know, when you, you mentioned that eight in a row um, and you enjoy the victory so much uh, uh, throughout that and you love the opportunity to rub it in and, and then, uh, you know, the Queensland teams of that time uh, were pretty much staying quiet, weren't saying too much and saying, oh, yeah, yeah, we, uh, we won, very good, but um, uh, they'll be tough. They'll come back. New South Wales, always give them the respect, put it back, put the ball in their court. Um, 
origin matches uh, can always be uh, can be turned uh, very very quickly. Um, respect is uh, is an enormous thing, despite the confidence you may carry into the game. Well, we can't wait for that one. The State of Origin Series opener will be played down in Sydney, but this week, Magic Round, all the focus on here in Queensland. Plenty of big games. Stay tuned to Wide World of Sports, including Thursday night, the Women's Origin Series, with the Queenslanders out to defend the shield. This year, NRL on 9 is your one-stop shop for all footy. That's right, Freddie. Not about the highlights. Action. Seven days a week. Bill and Gus podcast. Get that on your drive on the way home. Immortal behaviour. Grab a seat on the couch for that, and of course, my favourite, Fred in the Own. The best footy brains, the biggest games. Don't trust the algorithm, subscribe to NRL on 9 and get all your entertainment there.